We begin today the Gemara on Daf Samachtes Samar Aleph, four lines from the top of the Yamad where it says Gufa. See, the Gemara brings back the Allah mentioned before that Rabbi Yechanan said regarding a person that stole something that uh, he's not uh, able to be Makdashit. So Gufa, here is the Allah itself that Rabbi Yechanan said before Omar Rabbi Yechanan. Rabbi Yechanan said, Gazal, if a person steals something, but the owner never gave up on it. So it, wherever it is, it always remains in the owner's uh, possession or ownership. So both the original owner and the gazlin cannot be makdish, this item. The gazlin is because he has no ownership over it. It doesn't belong to him at all. And the owner is because it's not in his actual possession. You could only be makdish something that's now in your possession. It's not enough that's just to just own it. The Gemara before brought the Pasuk, the Gemara is going to bring again, it says, Ish kiyak, uh, kiyak is beisai. You can only be marked with something that is like a house. The house is in your possession, but not something that was taken out of your house. Is it true that Rabbi Yechinen said this, that if it's not in your possession, you can't be marked with it? But for Omer Rabbi Yechinen, Rabbi Yechinen says, Halacha kistam Mishnah. We always paskin like a Stam Mishnah. And here, it seems like that we have a Stam Mishnah that says that you could be mocked with something that's not in your possession. The Gemara already brought this uh, Mishnah Bekitzer before in Daf Samaches. Here, the Gemara go, brings the entire Mishnah from the beginning till the end. With Tanan, the Mishnah says as follows Kerem Revai. A vineyard in the fourth year, the halacha of the vineyard in the fourth year is that the grapes have to be taken to Yerushalayim to be eaten there, or you can redeem the grapes and bring the money to Yerushalayim and then eat over there from that money. But you can't just eat the grapes where they are here. So in order for people not to take from these grapes, what would they do? So everyone should know that it's, uh, it's still in the fourth year. So they would make a sign around it. They would make a sign by placing these pieces of earth around it so people should see that stay away from this. You can't eat from it. Now, what was the meaning of this particular sign that they used? It was a sign that this uh, vineyard here is like these pieces of earth. Just like these pieces of earth, it's something that you could have an awe from. Afainami, so to this vineyard, ki mifrike, if you redeem it and you'll bring the money to Yishalayim, shari lisonim, you You could have anah from the grapes itself right here where it is. That was the kind of sign they used here when it was the Kerem Revai in the fourth year. Now, Vishal Arla, if it was a vineyard that was still in the th- first three years, so then there's Allah of Arla, which is that it's completely Asabachila and Asabahana altogether. So here they would make also a sign around it that you should stay away from it, but they used a different sign. Bechar says they put these broken pieces of earthenware around it to people should stay away from it. What was the meaning of this sign? Simon, the Gemara says, the simon was kicharsis, that it's like these broken pieces of earthenware. Ma shena nomino, just like from these pieces, these broken pieces, you could have no benefit of it. Af high, so to this uh, vineyard, the less ba nomine, you could have no no from it at all. Now, Vishal Kvaris. If there was a property that had, there was a kvarim there. Mm-hmm. So you want people to stay away from it, to kainim, not to go there, to become tame. How would they make a sign there for this? Besid. They would put white plaster to make a simon that people shouldn't go there. What was the meaning of this simon? Simona the chiver. It's a simon that it's a place which is white, cut some ice like the bones that are buried there. And even more, and they would dilute this uh, plaster with water, and then they would pour it around in the area where the cave it is. It should be very white, so it should be clear for people to see that they shouldn't walk there. said about this, when was it necessary to make the simon regarding the vineyard, whether it's in the fourth year or in the three years, to, that people should stay away from it. Bishvi is the hefke, you know, in the year of Shemitah. Why the year of Shemitah? Because in the year of Shemitah, since everything, the property is completely hefke, so anybody and people can come and pick from there for themselves. So then there's a concern that people are going to come and take for themselves and uh, they're going to eat from it, even though it's Arla or it's Revai. So they have to make the simon. But in any of the other years of the Shemitah, meaning the other years and the other six years, not Shemitah itself. So over here, it's not our responsibility to stop anybody from coming and eating from it. Let the Rasha get fed from this and he'll die from what he does. He's coming and he's stealing. He's taking something that doesn't belong to him. That's his responsibility to stop from doing an Aveda. We don't have to make these signs from him. On the contrary, he'll eat from it and then he'll get his punishment for this. That's what Abshem Gamliel said. 
Now here the Brisa continues, or the Mishnah rather continues, and this is the relevant part for us over here. Vahatsnuin and those pious, modest individuals. So in order not to make sure that people that are picking from it should not be eating something which is kerem revai, which is not allowed, what they would do is manichen asamois, they would put aside money. And they would say as follows, call on ilkat, anything that will come later and be picked from the, um, from the vineyard, from this vineyard here, when it's going to be picked, and now that person is picking it and wants to eat it in order that he shouldn't be eating something, which is Karim Revai, and he's doing Yisr, so then when he's picking it, the money that's here that I'm putting aside here right now should be in exchange for the Kedusha of what that has, and the money will be brought to Yerushalayim, so therefore those uh, grapes are allowed to be eaten. So you save the person from that Yisr of, of eating from these grapes. So from the Karim Revai, correct? So what do you see from this? That even though we're talking over here about these grapes, that somebody comes and picks, he stole it from you. Once he stole it from you and he picked it, it's not in your possession anymore. Nevertheless, this, the money that you put aside, after he picked it, it now becomes, the, 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 it becomes transferred and exchanged. The hectic that there is in that Karim Revai, or the Kedusha rather, that there is in that Karim Revai to your money. So you see from this, here you have a Stam Mishnah, it's saying that the Tznuin said this, but it doesn't say any name, so this is considered to be a, tz, a Stam Mishnah, that this is what the Tznuin would do, that they would exchange the Kedusha that there is in the Kerem Revai to the money, even after it was picked says, by, these, by these people. Because it says here, Kol Hanilkat, what the person is saying is, Kol Hanilkat, the Gemara is going to be Medayik, this in a moment. After it's picked, then the kedusha of that should be exchanged and go on the money that I designate now. But not, it doesn't get exchanged, it doesn't go on the money that you put aside now before it's picked. It happens after it's picked. So you see that you can make this exchange even once it was stolen and it's out of your possession. Mm -hmm. So how could Rabbi Yechen say that when something is stolen from you and it's out of your possession, mm -hmm. you, can't, uh, you can't be makdashit? Says the Gemara, if you'll argue and say it's not a Stam Mishnah. Man Tana Tznuin, who is that Tana the Mishnah that says what the Tznuin, these uh, pious individuals used to do? Rab Shimon Gamliel, it's a continuation of Rab Shimon Gamliel speaking. It started before in that Mishnah, Omer Rab Shimon Gamliel. So this is also Rab Shimon Gamliel's opinion. It's not uh, a Stam Mishnah. But the Gemara says that doesn't help us much to answer this question. Because Va'amar Rabbi Babachan, Omer Rabbi Yechinen, Rabbi Babachan said in the name of Rabbi Yechinen in another place, and it's a different thing. At Kol Makayim Shashana Rab Shimon Gamliel be Mishnah Seinu. Any time Rab Shimon Gamliel teaches a halacha in the Mishnah, halacha kamaisai, Rab Yechinen says we always pass it like Rab Shimon Gamliel. Besides three cases, Chutz Me Arev. Besides the halacha of Arev, which is halacha about Arev Kablan. And there's a machlekes about this there. He says, we don't pass like Rav Shemagam Liel. And the Tzaydon, the halacha about Tzaydon, which is a halacha regarding a get. And the Raya Achreina. And a halacha regarding Raya Achreina, regarding bringing proof in a Din after a person said he has no proof. Those three cases, you don't pass like Rav Shemagam Liel. Otherwise, you're always passing like Rav Shemagam Liel. So, so the question still remains, how could he exchange? Over here we see the Mishnah says that he's exchanging, even after it's out of his possession. So if so, how does Rabbi Yechim say that you can't be maktish when it's something is stolen out of your possession? So the Gemara changes the version of what it said in the Lashon of the Mishnah there. Omri, so they answered to this, Loi teimet, don't read the Mishnah there, kol hanilkat mizeh, that when the person's putting aside the money, it's snuin, when they put aside the money, they said that after it's going to be picked, then the designated money, the exchange should happen. That the, now the kedusha of that uh, kerem revai should go on the money. El rather eme read it. Call hamislaket mize. What the tznuin did when they put aside the money? They said that for the future. They said that now we want this money to be kedusha. The, the kedusha on this money should be for what, what's what's going to be picked in the future. So now it's still in their possession, and they're saying whichever one will end up being picked in the future, which is now still ours. This money that's here now should, be, should have the Kiddush on it. So because it's still in their possession right now, when it happens in the future, retroactively the money that they set aside right now has the exchange in it. So it's not after it's out of their possession. They're saying that this money is designated for what's going to happen in the future to what still belongs to them now. So therefore, in this Mishnah, it's not in any way saying that you could uh, be mocked or something or exchange the Kiddush of something that's out of your possession. 
Okay, the Gemara in a moment is going to explain that this idea that you're exchanging uh, the, the, the money based on what's going to happen in the future is connected to a concept which Gemara is going to get into Barichas over here, which is called Breda. When something happens, when there's an action that happens in the future, you're designating money now and you're saying that the Kedusha of what's being picked in the future, so retroactively, the money that's being designated here now should be in exchange for that which is being picked in the future. But you don't know what exactly is going to be picked in the future. So when you're designating this money now for that, you don't know what it is that is going to be in the future. But nevertheless, once that action of whoever is picking it happens in the future, now we say Breda retroactively when you put aside the money, this is what you put aside the money for then. This is the concept called Breda. That's what the, the Gemara is saying here now is based on. But the whole thing is carried by the fourth year, everything. Yeah, but... Um, no, he's not putting money for the whole cat. He's not putting money for the whole cat. He's putting money for particularly that uh, thing that is being picked. Maybe for the other things. I don't know. He has another plan. He's only putting money for those things, people that are stealing, that are picking from it. So if the guy picks the whole thing, they're going to... Work. Okay, so it goes on all the money. Okay, but we're talking about for Kala Mislaket, only for what's going to be picked. Okay, but now the Gemara asks on this itself. Me, Omer Rabbi Yechelen Hochi. Could you say that this change of version, the version that we just said is true? That Rabbi Yechanan was saying that the way that Snuin used to do this is that they would put aside the money and they would say that what, what's going to be picked in the future, that's what this money is going to be designated for, to be in exchange for, for that. But could, could this be that Rabbi Yechanan said this? But what Rabbi Yechenin said about this subject that we're talking about here, about this mission of the Tznuin, that Tznuin, this, that he, what these pious individuals did, and what Abdaisa said in a different uh, Braise, they're basically saying the exact same point. Now, here the Gemara will bring that Rabdaise Nilkat Kama. Rabdaise spoke about a similar kind of thing that you're trying to save people from an Isser. And there Rabdaise clearly said that the way this is done is after it's picked. Then you can go and exchange and say that what's being picked should not have its uh, ownership. And then you can change it and say, exchange it with other money. But it's only after the fact, not before the fact. As the Gemara here, let's see the details. The Gemara here brings the Braisa. What does it say in the Braisa? The Tanya, Rabbi Yehudahim, Rabbi Yudah says as follows. Here what we're talking about is a person has a field of wheat. What's the Allah by a field of wheat? If you're picking the wheat and then there's what falls down. One or two uh, stalks of wheat fall down. So that's what's called leket. You have to leave it for the poor individuals. What's if three or four pieces fall down? So then that's still yours. That doesn't belong to the poor people. Problem is though, the poor people don't necessarily make a distinction whether it's one, two, or three, or four pieces that fall down. And they take for themselves even what really doesn't belong to them. Not intentionally, but they're taking what doesn't belong to them. So therefore now, in order to save these aniyim from this isr, that they're taking that doesn't belong to them, what doesn't belong to them. And Taisus here adds also, there's another thing. When they're taking what doesn't belong to them, they think that it's hefker. And the halacha of these things that are hefker, that belong to aniyim, that it's potter from maiser. But really it's not potter from maiser, because it's not hefker. So in order to save them from this isr of eating tevel without maiser, so Rabbi Yudah, Rabbi Yudah said, shachris in the morning, Balabayis, Oymid, Balabayis, the property, the property owner here stands in his field, and he announces, whatever the poor people are going to collect here today, Yehei Hefker, should become Hefker. So he's saying this in the morning, whatever they're going to be doing in the future. Right? So he's, he's declaring a Hefker, even though they didn't know and picked it yet, but he's talking about the future. And Rabbi Yudha says he has the power to declare it hafkir, and what's going to be hafkir when they pick it. So then it, it, it retroactively clarifies that that's what his declaration was applicable to. Was it taken like before, they, before there was leket? <clears throat> no, no, no. Like I said, because they're taking the leket of something that's not really leket, because it's three or four pieces of stalk uh, from the wheat, from stalks of wheat that uh, fall down, and it's not really leket. So to save them from this iser, he's declaring it as hafkir. But however, Abdaisa says, no, you can't say this in the morning, in advance. Rather, when it comes in the evening, when the day is over, and then he sees the poor people that came and they took the, wheat, the stalks of wheat that fell for themselves and they may have taken also some things that they weren't allowed to take. So in the evening, then he comes and says, only what the poor people had already picked for themselves and they weren't allowed, that's what he declares to be Hefker. So what do we see over here clearly? Rab is saying you can't declare this in advance. You can only say this, that in declare it after the fact. 
So how could the Gemara before say that Kala mislaket that we're going to say the version? What what did the Tznuim do? That the Tznuim would in advance designate money for this Kedem and Revai in order to exchange it to be to, that the Kedusha should go on the money. And they did, again they did that all in advance. And but Rabbi Yechonin clearly said that what the Tznuim did and what Rabdoisa says is the same thing. And by Rabdoisa, Rabdoisa clearly says that you can't do it in the morning. You could only do this in the evening after the fact. But in advance, there is no Brady. You can't do that in, a, in a, ahead of time. So the Gemara says, you're right, there's a problem over here. So therefore, Eipoch, you have to switch the opinions in this Braise. The Rabbi Yehuda to Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda. You have to switch the opinions of Rabbi Yehuda to Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda to Rabbi Yehuda. It's really Rabbi Yehuda the one that says that you do it in advance. Just like we said the version before in the in the Mishnah that we're going to is there called Hamislakit, what's going to be uh, picked in the future. That you do have the power to do that in, in advance. And that's what uh, Rabbi Yechenin holds. But the Gemara asks on this now, Am I of Why are you switching the opinions here in this Braise, switching the opinions of Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Yehuda to make it fit with what Rabbi, Rabbi Yechenin said? Maybe just switch the statement of Rabbi Yechenin in the Eime and say as follows. Tznuin, the Rabbi Yehuda, Omri Dover Echad. Keep Rabbi Yehuda's opinion for what it is. That Rabbi Yehuda is the one that says that you can declare it and designate it to be Hefker even in advance. And Rabbi, when Rabbi, Rabbi Yechen said that the mission here about the Tznuin is the same like another opinion. Who was that other opinion? Not Abdaisa. It was Rabbi Yehuda. And therefore, we could say the Mishnah before, when it says, Kol HaMislaket, that you're doing it only for the future. And what Rabbi Yehuda says is the same. Instead of switching the Lashon and the Braise, why not better switch uh, that the, the way Rabbi Yechenin was quoted, was misquoted. And maybe Rabbi Yechenin was the one that said that the Tznu and Rabbi Yehuda is the same thing. And you don't have to switch to say that in the Braise, or the, the opinions in the Braise. So the Gemara answers to that. And here, the Gemara gets into the whole sugya of Breda, as I mentioned. So Omri, they answered and said like this. No, Loisagia, the Loimiz Hapchis, Masnita. Anyways, it, we, we have no choice. We have to switch the opinions in this Braise. Rabbi Deisa and Rabbi opinions must be reversed. Why? The Baha Masnisen, Ketani, or Masnita. And here, in this Braise, it says, the Islay, let Rabbi Yehuda Breda. If you leave the version of the Braise as we have it, <coughs> what is it saying over here? That Rabbi Yehuda holds of the concept of Breda. Again, what does the concept of Breda mean? That you do an action, and you, the action that you're doing now is only going to be clarified later based on another action. And based on that action later, it retroactively clarifies what you did before. So, so over here as well, what is this person doing? He's coming in the morning and he's declaring for the future that what the Anim are going to pick that's not theirs should be Hefke. You don't know what it is they're going to pick. But then when they pick what they do in the future, it retroactively clarifies that that's what your declaration in the beginning was referring to. That's the idea of Breda. So if that's what Rabbi Yehuda is saying here, that you could declare this in the morning, so that means that over here Rabbi Yehuda holds of Breda. But we know Rabbi Yehuda in another place, the less lay Breda, he actually does not hold that we can, there's no such a thing as Breda. You can't just declare now about something that's unknown and say that retroactively it's going to be clarified. Because the Tanah, we have a Mishnah, or it's really a Braise, the Tanya, it says in a Braise, we learned this Braise before, it's, more, it's brought in many places in the Gemara. So the price says, A person buys a barrel of wine from the Kutim. And this is happening, as Rashi says, on Erev Shabbos, late in the afternoon, right when Shabbos is coming in. So he's buying this barrel of wine, and he's buying it from the Kutim. So the Kutim are individuals that do not separate any Trume or Meiser. And now you want to be able to drink from this barrel of wine. You don't have any other wine for Kiddush. And the problem is, once Shabbos comes in, you can't anymore separate the Trumas and Meisers. So and you want to use the wine, so what do you do? So the Tanakhama here says, Rabbi Meir actually says, Oimeh, where he just to clear and say as follows, Shnei lug in shani yasit lahafrish. So if this is a barrel which is made from a hundred lug of wine, so then two lugin of this that I will de- 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 I will separate in the future, are in truma. That's going to be truma. Truma, the average amount of what you take for truma is, is a fiftieth. One of fiftieth, that is. So that's two lugin out of a hundred lugin in this barrel. Asara, ten, will be my serishen. So 10 from this 100 will be my Serishen. And Tess, 9, will be my Sesheni. Tess was actually not here, but in Gittin points out that uh, it seems like the amount that it says here is not exactly precise because once you take off 2 from the 100 for the Truma, so now you only have 98 Lug left, so you don't need 10 as uh, 10% from 100. It needs to be less than that. Okay, Tess discusses that.
And then, after you designate the Maise Sheni, Umechel, Rashi's Pshat for Umechel is that you could now designate this um, money, whatever money you have, that it should, that it should be in exchange for this Maise Sheni that you designated within this barrel. And then, Veshay Simiyat, you can go and drink from this wine right away, even though you didn't physically <laughs> separate the Trumas and Maistris yet, but you designated it. This is Rav Meir's opinion. So what do you see here? What's the point that Rav Meir is saying really based on? What Rav Meir is saying over here is based on the concept of Breda. Because now, when you're declaring all of this, we, it's all mixed. The wine is mixed in this barrel. But later, when you're going to come and drink from it, and then afterwards you're going to separate the Trum and the Maestris, the action that you're going to do later is going to retroactively clarify that this was your designation in the beginning. That's Rabbi Yehuda's opinion. Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Shimon, Oisrim. However, Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda, and Rabbi Shimon say, no, you can't do this. So what do you see over here? So seemingly the basis of Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Yehuda, and Rabbi Shimon, why are they saying that you can't do this? Because there's no concept of Breda. You can't declare this and then right later your action will retroactively clarify. So here we see Rabbi Yehuda does not hold of Breda. So how could the Breda said before say that Rabbi Yehuda says that you could declare in advance that what these Aniyim are going to pick that's not theirs will become Hefke? You don't know now what they're picking. How could, how could they work that retroactively it clarifies what it is that's Hefke? So therefore, we change the opinions of Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Daisa before. So that's what Rabbi Yehuda should fit with what he says here. Okay, but now the Gemara doesn't accept this though. The Gemara says, Amai ka'afchislalimasnite. Why are you switching the opinions before? Of Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Yehuda. Mishun de Kashi, the Rabbi Yehuda, the Rabbi Yehuda. Because you have your contradiction in Rabbi Yehuda's opinion, whether he holds a Breda or he does not hold a Breda. But it's not going to help you much because Hashtanami, even now, Kashi, the Rabbi Yechenen, the Rabbi Yechenen. There will also be a contradiction in Rabbi Yechenen's opinion regarding this subject of Bereda, regarding the subject of whether you can declare something and then later, by the action later, it retroactively clarifies it. Why? Because the Amrit, because before you said, according to Rabbi Yechenen, that you could declare this in advance. You said, don't read the version of the Mishnah that only after it's picked. Then the exchange of the Kedusha of the Karen Revai goes in the money. But uh, rather, Ella Ema, rather you said to read it. Kol Hamislakate, that we're reading about what's, what's going to be picked later. And you could do this all in advance. You could designate that money even in advance. So Alma, from this I see, Isle Breda. So over here you see that according to Rabbi Yechen, and he holds up this idea of Breda. That, that, that you could uh, retroactively clarify it. But here comes a contradiction in Rabbi Yechenen's opinion. Because of, oh, Rabbi Yechenen, less lay Breda. We know that Rabbi Yechenen does not hold up this idea of Breda. Where do we see this? When it comes to inheritance. Brothers that are dividing the inheritance. We define this division as an acquisition. As, as two people that were partners, and then they, exchange, they, they were partners together, and then they decided to split and, and to sort of uh, make an exchange. I will give you this part of it in exchange of you giving me that part. And that's a kind of an acquisition. It's lekuchais. What's the relevant of, relevance of the fact that we define inheritance as an acquisition? When Yovel comes around, this entire division of the inheritance goes back. Because it's like every sale in Yevil, when Yevil comes, it goes back to the, to the buyer over here as well. This whole division, this exchange, which is a kind of acquisition, goes back to where it was in the beginning. All right, if you would learn that you say Bereide, so then what happens when the, the brothers divide? That retroactively clarifies that this is what you inherited directly from your father right from the beginning. So it's an inheritance. Regarding inheritance, there's no din of Yevil. But over here, what we're saying is, it doesn't retroactively clarify. When you inherited, there was a shutfis. Both brothers inherited together. And now, when they divide, it's a new division that's happening now. It's like an exchange of partners. And therefore, Yevil applies over here. So I clearly see that Rabbi Yechenen does not hold of this concept of Breda. So we have a contradiction now in the opinion of Rabbi Yechenen regarding the union of Breda. If we're going to switch, this is all based on the fact that we wanted it before, switch the version of the Mishnah there to read it as kol hamislaket. That this is going on the future. That you're, that you're able to designate money for the future for the people that are picking up this Kerem Revai. So therefore, the Gemara goes back and says, Elo, we can't switch that uh, gears in the Mishnah there. Elo, lo, elo, we go back to the original version where we had it, Kol Hanilkat. Over there, what the Tznuin, what these pious individuals used to do to save people from the Isra of eating of the Karen Revai, 
you read it as Kala Nilkat, which means that only after the fact, after the, we, we see already what they picked, then the money that you put aside and designate to switch the Kedusha of what they picked for this money, it only happens after the fact. I, the question then becomes, the original contradiction we had here now comes back. What was our original contradiction? Rabbi Yechanan says that when something is not in your possession, you can't be makdish it. Here in this mission, you see that even after it's picked, you could exchange it for the money that the Kedusha should go onto this money. So how do we answer that contradiction? Now Rabbi Yechanan says, you're passing like a Stam Mishnah. So the Gemara answer is, Rabbi Yechanan, Stam Achrena Ashkach. Yeah, true, Rabbi Yechanan says the rule that you're passing like a Stam Mishnah, but here there's a second Stam Mishnah that we have that Rabbi Yechanan is going according to, not according to that Stam Mishnah. What is the second Stam Mishnah? Says the Gemara, it's actually the Mishnah over here that we're in the beginning of this Patek. The mission at the beginning of our Pedic says, If one person stole something and then another person steals it from his house, the second Ganav does not pay Kefal. All right, so what's the reason for this? Because the first Ganav steals from the owner. So you pay Kefal. The second Ganav is stealing from the Ganav. So you don't pay Kefal. But the question is, why not? Am I? Why doesn't the second Ganav pay Kefal? It's understood why the second Ganev would not have to pay Kefal to the first Ganev, because the Pasuk says, You steal it from the owner, that's what you pay Kefal for. You don't pay Kefal to the Ganev that you stole from. But Elo, Le Bailem Neshalem, why doesn't the second Ganev pay Kefal to the first Bailem, just like the first Ganev pays Kefal? Since this object, which is in the possession of the first Ganev, who does it really belong to? It belongs to the first Ganev. So just like the first owner, that is, the original owner, that is. So just like the first Ganev stole from the original owner and he has to pay him Kefal, even while it's in the house of the Ganev, when the second Ganev steals, who's he really stealing from? He's really stealing from the real owner. So he should also be paying Kefal. Why not? So from this Stam Mishnah, you see that the logic behind this is, The second Ganev does not pay Kefal to the first Ganev because it doesn't belong to him. He's not, it's not be based it's not his. And You also don't pay the Kefal to the first, to the real owner, because it's not in his possession. So therefore, we over here, we see this concept that when something is not in your possession, you have no uh, connection to it, you have no rights over it, and you don't get paid, ke- paid kefal for it. Similar over here, Rabbi Yechonen took out from this Stam Mishnah regarding Hektish, that if something is not in your possession, you don't have the power to be Makdish. This was the Stam Mishnah that Rabbi Yechonen based his Allah on. But the Gemara now asks, so my chaz is the also basa ha hi What did Rabbi Yechonen see that he's following this Stam Mishnah here? Why doesn't he follow the Stam Mishnah that we quoted that it says that the pious individuals would be exchanging the Kedusha of the Keren Revai even when it's out of their possession already? Maybe that Stam Mishnah is better. The answer is, Mishon the Messiah Lekra. Because in the Stam Mishnah that we have over here, there is a Pasik that is proving it. What's the Pasik? We quoted this before already. The Ish, Ki Yaktish is based on Kedish Lashem. When a person is Maktish something, the Pasik says it's like it's you being Maktish your house to Hashem. Ma Beisai Bereshusai, just like your house is in your possession. I've called Bereshusai. So too, you could only be Maktish something which is in your possession. That's why Rabbi Yechonim followed this Stam Mishnah. And now the Gemara comes back to something that we quoted before. So again, just to, to review here, we had before two different cases where a person is uh, declaring something in order to prevent people of doing an Easter in the future. One was in the case regarding the Kerem Revai, where people may pick from this Kerem, Ganovim, Ganovim come and steal from this Kerem Revai, and the Oiva is of eating from the Kerem Revai outside Yerushalayim. And the other case was from the poor people that are picking up the pieces of stalk, that the, the, the stalks of wheat that fall, and they may not realize that they're taking from what really doesn't belong to them, so you declare it as hefker in advance. All right, so before we had, Rabbi Yechonin said that these two things are the same thing. We had the Tznuin that did this, the pious individuals that wanted to save these people, and Rabbi Yechonin said they're both saying the same idea. So now the Gemara is going to bring different uh, ideas over here that really, if not for Rabbi Yechonin saying that it's the same idea, they don't necessarily go together. Amar Abayas, Abayas said about this. He loved Amar Rabbi Yechonin. If not for the fact that Rabbi Yechonin said this, that Snuin, what the pious individuals did to save the Ganovim from eating from the Karim Revai. And Rabbi Yechonin, and Rabbi Yechonin that says to save the poor people that don't realize and are and picking up the stalks that don't belong to them. That Omer Dover Echel, Rabbi Yechon has said that they're both saying the same point. Have a minute, and I would say that, no, they're not exactly the same. Tznuin is Lud Rabbi Yaisi. What the Tznuin did, they would agree to what Rabbi Yaisi said. 
but Rabdaise less laid its nuin. But Rabdaise would not agree to what its nuin uh, did. Why is that? So the Gemara explains. The point the Gemara is going to explain over here is by the case of the tznuin, they said something benegay to real thieves. They came and stole from the Karen Ravai. Rabdaisa wasn't speaking about real thieves. Rabdaisa was speaking about poor people that don't realize. They, they pick up stalks of wheat that they think belongs to them, but it doesn't. So it's a different kind of thing. Tznuin is the that Rabdaisa. So what the, what the pious individuals did, they wanted to save these open ganovim. For sure, they would agree to what Rabdaisa did. Because Omar Beganev, of the Rabban if regarding a ganev, the Tznu and the Chachamim here, they came and rectified this to save these Ganovim from eating from the Kerem Revai, this Iser, Aniyim Tzvichil Emeima, regarding these poor individuals that don't realize that it doesn't belong to them. Needless to say, that we also will do a similar thing to save them from uh, Iser. But on the other hand, Rabdaisa, less like the Tznu. What Rabdaisa did, they don't agree to the, he doesn't agree to the Tznu. Why? Because Aniyim moved off the Rabbanan to Kante. Regarding these poor individuals, they don't intend to steal, they just don't realize. So for them, we made a Takane that they could, that, that they should be able to take it for themselves and we could clear it Hefker, even though it's out of your possession already. But by a Ganev that's going and stealing openly, Chachamim didn't make this uh, kind of Takane. Okay, so therefore, that's not, it's not the same thing. I, what what uh, Abai is basically saying is that really, min hatayre, it's not an option to do not this and not this because it's already out of your possession. Elamai, the power that you have to do this is all just a takonas chachamim. That maybe with the kayak of hefke, bez, and hefke, that you have the power to declare it as hefke or to exchange it with the money that you're setting aside to save them. So if it's all a takonas chachamim, then we can make the simple distinction over here that the Takanas Chacham is only for people that don't realize they're stealing, not for people that realize that they're stealing. But when Rabbi Yechenen made this comparison, apparently Rabbi Yechenen held that according to the Tznuin and according to Rabbi Deis, it's not a Takanas Chachamim. This is a power you have in Atayda. You can exchange it or you can declare it Hefker, even though it's out of your possession. So if you have that power in Atayda, there's no difference if it's open Ganovim or it's not open Ganovim. It's the same thing. It's a power in Atayda that you have. Another thing, Omar Rav, Rav says, he loved Omar Rav Yechen and Snum, Rav Deisa, Omar Dov Rechad. If not for Rav Yechen and said that it's Snum and Rav Deisa said the same thing, Hava Amina, then I would say that the basis of what the pious individuals did comes from another place. I would say it's Snum and Rav Meiri. What the Snum did is based on Rav Meir's opinion. It's not similar to what Rav Deisa said. Why? Because Lav Omar Rav Meir, didn't Rav Meir say the following point? Maiser, and this is talking about Maiser Sheni, the Maiser Sheni that you have to bring to Yerushalayim, Momen Gavoyahu. This is really not your money. It's money that belongs to Hashem. The halacha regarding this Maiser Sheni is, you can't use this Maiser Sheni for yourself, for example, to be Mekadosh isha with it. It's not your money. But nevertheless, Vafila Hachi, Le'inyem Pedia, when it comes to redeeming these fruits of Maiser Sheni, the title considers it to be yours, that you are the owner. <laughs> As the Pasik says, <laughs> If you are going to redeem from your Maisa, the title says it's yours, then when you redeem it, you have to add a fifth. And this is a halacha only by the owner himself that redeems it. If someone else that's not the owner redeems it, he doesn't have to add that fifth. So, the title says that it's yours, and you have to add a fifth. So we see our interesting Chiddush, the Torah says, even though in essence it's not yours, but nevertheless, when you redeem it, the Torah considers it to be yours. Now, similar, we could apply this by the Kerem Revai. Kerem Revai, you treat the same way as Maish Hashani. Kerem Revai, you also bring it to Yerushalayim, and the Gemara here brings a Gzayda Shavah, Kerem Revai Nami, by the Kerem, the vineyard in the fourth year as well, Goma Kaidish Kaidish Mi Maiser, we learn a Gzayda Shavah with the words Kaidish from Maiser. Ksiv it says over here, Kaidish Yilulim. By the Kerem Revai, it says that it's Kaidish Yilulim, it's Kaidish, you take it to Yerushalayim, you praise Hashem. Oksiv Gabi Maiser, by Maiser, it also says, Vchal Maiser, Aretz, Mizera, Aretz, Mipriya, Eitz, Lashem, Hu, Kaidish. Over there, it also says the term Kaidish. So ma kaidish chsiv gabi maisa, just like the expression of kaidish that it says by maisa, it's holy. Alpha gab the moment gavoyu. So even though it's kaidish, it's the abish's money or it's the abish's produce. But le inyim pidiye oik me rachmane berishusay. When it comes to redeeming it, the Torah considers it to be yours. Alpha hai kaidish nami here as well by the kadem revai when he uses the term kaidish chsiv gabi kadem revai. Alpha gab the lav mami didehu. Even though this is not really your money, but nevertheless le inyim achuli when it comes to desecrating it. To exchange it for money and to bring the money to Yerushalayim, Oik Merachmane Bereshusei. The Torah considers it to be yours. So therefore, over here as well, even though it's it's already something which is out of your possession, what are we talking about over here? What did Tznuin do? 
even when someone else, a Ghanav, came and picked it and it's out of your possession, nevertheless, you can still de de desecrate that and exchange what was picked for the money to be hectic. And the Gemara now explains this. The Haki Isse Birishu say, because really, even when it is in Yorishos, Halavdi Dehu. It's really not yours, it's really Kaidesh. But nevertheless, you're able to desecrate these grapes and the money becomes, uh, has the Kedusha instead. So Mishum Hachi, therefore as well, this is the basis of what the Tznuin did, that even when someone else, a Ganev, comes and picks it and it's out of your possession, Matzi Machel. But nevertheless, once, just like you see the Chiddush of the Torah Bechlal, that you could go, come and exchange it and take off the Kedusha of it, even though it's really not yours, but the Torah gives you the power to do that. So, so too, when Ganavim take it out of your possession, you also have the power to do that. Avol Gabi Leket, but what Rab Daisu was speaking about, <coughs> sorry, which is the case of Leket, when these Aniyim are picking up these stalks of wheat that don't belong to them, over there you don't find such a Chiddush that you can uh, declare something Hefka, which is not yours. Kivin the Mamayna Didei, these stalks of wheat, it's really yours. It doesn't belong to these Aniyim. Kisa Berishu say, so over here we say, when it's still in your possession, before these Aniyim took it for themselves, then you can, can declare it Hefker. Kilesa Berishu say, but when it's not in your possession anymore, there's no reason to say that you should have the power to declare it Hefker. Okay, one more thing, just a short thing here, the Gemara finishes off regarding what Rabbi Yechenin said. Omer Avinu, Rabbi Yechenin said, Ilav, the Omer Rabbi Yechenin. If not for the fact that Rabbi Yechenin said that Tznun ve Rabbi Yechenin, Omer Dov Recha, that what the Tznun would do, and what Rabbi Yechenin did, that they're saying the same point, Hava Amine, I would anyway say so, that Man Tane Tznun Rabbi Yechenin, that who is the Tana of that Mishnah of the Tznun, it's really just Rabbi Yechenin speaking, even though it's a Stam Mishnah, but it's really just one, one opinion of Rabbi Yechenin. Why? Ki Hechid Le Tikshi, Stam Mishnah Le Rabbi Yechenin. Going back to the original question that we asked here, in order that there shouldn't be a question on Rabbi Yechenin from this Stam Mishnah, Again, because Rabbi Yechenin said that when something is out of your possession, you cannot be makdashit. And here what the Tznuin did, we have a Stam Mishnah that's saying that you could be paideh, these this Kerem Revai, even after they stole it, even after it's out of your possession. So now that we say that this Stam Mishnah is only the opinion of Rabbi Yechenin, so it's not a question of Rabbi Yechenin. But Rabbi Yechenin, kistam yichido loy omar. This that Rabbi Yechenin said that we spaskin like a Stam Mishnah is not in a case where we know for a fact that this Stam Mishnah is only following one opinion. So therefore that Mishnah is not going to be a question on Rabbi Yechenin.